And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the to the to the Not every boxer is satisfied by just getting the victory. No. No. <laughs> I want to get people what they want to see. <laughs> Excitement. All right, you can do that too. Yes. Winning goes a long way to progressing your career. But when you add in a few unnecessary taunts and showboats here and there, often enough the crowd will respond to it in a positive way. <laughs> Roy is opening up angles. <laughs> There have been countless showmen in the combat sports industry dating right back to the ancient times when gladiators would go to extremes to win the glory of the fans. On the contrary, some fighters today kind of miss the fine line between entertainment and humiliation. It's all good adding a bit of spice to the bout, but never mock a man that is down and defeated. That's just plain wrong. And the fight has been stopped. Fonseca unable to answer the tank. Welcome back to another Top 20 Countdown here on Boxing Legends TV. Today we'll be taking a look at some of the most iconic showboating moments from the sport of boxing, and with a bit of MMA thrown in just for good measure. Who can stop that man? If you enjoy these countdowns, please remember to hit that like button as it helps out the channel a whole lot. Also, just a brief reminder, this is only part one. I can assure you, we'll uncover more classic moments as this series progresses. Roy Jones Jr. is a man who will take up many places as this series progresses. Not very often do fans get on his back for the way he toyed and dismantled his opponents back in his prime, probably due to the fact he was a very hard person to dislike in general. His match against David Telesco in January of 2000 was just typical Roy being Roy, having fun and entertaining the crowd. Keep attacking. Attack. Roy Jones saying, go ahead, come into the corner and get me. To the opponent into opening himself up so that he can answer him. This is Come on in here and fight, he's saying to Telesco. Nah, 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 you can't hit me. Believe it or not, Christy Martin, seen on the right, is regarded as one of the greatest female boxers of all time. Hard to believe with that physique, I know, but this was her competing way past her best. In fact, it's her very last fight. In the closing seconds of the 10th and final round, Martin proved it was going to take a lot more than just a few taps to get hurt out. By outlanding Martin, who finished the fight with her hands down. After the fight, both announced that they are hanging up the gloves. Older boxing fans are likely to remember the menacing style of Dwight Muhammad Kawi in the 1980s, an all-time great light heavyweight that was also a decent cruiserweight. His style was always likened to Joe Frazier for the way he bobbed and weaved before letting combinations go, and his WBA title fight in 1986 against Leon Spinks took it to another level. Mike Tyson wasn't one for showboating during his rise in the mid-80s, but one fighter he really didn't like was Mitch Blood Green. As far as I'm aware, this is the first time Tyson tried to mock an opponent during a fight. And thinking about it, to be honest, he never really did it much after. Can be learned in talking to some of the people he fought. <laughs> look at here, look at here. Just right laughing at I hope you didn't think we were going to miss out on some epic fails, because let's be honest, that's what most people like to see when it comes to showboating videos. Nate Campbell's act of idiocracy in his 2004 clash with Robbie Payton is the sole reason referees tell you to protect yourself at all times before the bout starts. Playing games with the hands down, okay? Thank you very much. Not smart. Not smart. A short left hook to the point of the chin. Oh! It was more like a three... a three-quarter uppercut hook, one of those 45-degree angle jobs. UFC 42 will always be remembered for one of the worst robberies in sports history between Genki Sudo and Dwayne Ludwig, but it was the opening seconds of round one that will always stick in my mind. 
Genki was far from your run-of-the-mill fighter. He's an actor, singer, choreographer, producer, literally everything that takes tons of artistical talent to do. And it often showed during his MMA career. And he can fight. He's not just crazy like this. This guy can really fight. Oh yeah, he can fight. Ricardo Mayorga is one of those fighters you either love or hate. He was a gang member, an active smoker, a violent trash talker, and to top it all off, an absolute psycho in the ring. Goes down, goes down in the face of a crushing right yeah. cross. He has too many controversial moments to cover in one slot, but here are a short collection of his hands-down taunting moments during his career. Ballast shot. And there's a good one too from Barnes. Asserted, and another one. Right into the face of Mayorga. And another one. And Mayorga just eats the punches and says, I'm coming right back. I don't know what that was about, but Mayorga was having an effect. But this is his first time at Middle East, so... Now he takes Trinidad's left hook. And this is a Mayorga tactic. He drops his hands and says, come on, hit me. The next clip is nothing short of legendary. I wish I knew the name of the men fighting because I'm pretty sure this is a professional bout. But check out how the older man reacts as the crowd starts to chant at him over his weight. We all know a fight can bring even the most bitter of rivals closer together, but some of these guys took it a tad too far. There have been many intimate moments during fights, so expect to see a part two to this entrance next time. Нещо стана. О, това беше подигравателно отношение от страна на Чисора. Казаги, the aggressive guy, and Bernard throwing few and few punches. And down goes Hopkins on a low blow. Not really showboating as such, but hilarious nonetheless. Holly Malinaji's outrageous hair malfunction in his 2008 bout with Love More Endo left his corner with no option but to cut it off during the actual fight itself. Better hope it's not a case of hair today. Title gone tomorrow. They have taken the scissors to Malinaji's hair. It's gone. Drastic situations require drastic measures. Before you start refreshing the page, wondering if your computer has crashed, just know that Demarcus Corley and Junior Witter's mid-fight standoff had live viewers banging the TV to see whether it was some sort of malfunction. What on earth were these guys thinking? The moment against Demarcus Corley in this big fight for the WBC light welterweight championship of the world. <laughs> Here is the ultimate standoff. Crowd went like this. Get food out of the ring in Vegas, you try this. There have been some insane ring entrances over the years, but no two fighters did it more consistently than Prince Nassim Hamed and Hector Macho Camacho. From flying carpets to Puerto Rican Captain Americas, these two knew how to put on a show before it even began. From a UFC casual fan perspective, I was kind of shocked when Cody Garbrandt was beaten by TJ Dillashaw this past weekend. The way Cody lit up his previous opponents really had me feeling like he was unbeatable. His spectacular performance over Dominic Cruz at UFC 207 was breathtaking, and I think the showbutting was kind of a thing of beauty. <laughs> When you think of showmanship in boxing, past and present, you think of the Eubanks. Chris Sr. had the persona of a true English gentleman, monocles glasses, a suave dress sense, and the voice of royalty. Being 
a warrior. That's what people came to see. If Prince William was ever a badass boxer, that is how he would go about it. Chris Jr., on the other hand, is more of an over-the-top defensive type showboater. Sure, he does the cringeworthy staring as well, but he prefers to break a fighter's will in the ring with his calculated defensive slips and shuffles. Miguel Laura is the type of fighter that needs a whole list like this dedicated to himself. The former WBC bantamweight champion was in a league of his own when it came to defensive slips and reaction times. The fight that really stood out to me was in his first meeting with Alberto Davila in 1986. The footage is a bit grainy, but you can still see the amazing defense the man possessed. Bernard Hopkins has had numerous showboating moments throughout his incredible career. The ring entrances went from dark to, well, kinda silly. But at the age of 46, to beat a top contender like Jean Pascal in the style he did was very impressive. Real hard shots Hopkins is landing here. Now Hopkins is doing push-ups in the ring to try to embarrass his younger opponent. <laughs> Hopkins is pulling out every trick in the book. I think we were originally planning to put all of Prince Nassim Ahmed's antics in one slot, but to be honest, it would likely last 10 minutes on its own. His 1997 world title clash with Jose Badillo really pushed the boundaries on what boxers can get away with when it comes to showboating. Again, that right hand working so well, and this is a very confident Ahmed. Now look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans, he's playing to the audience, trying to taunt who's taking all this. Although this is a boxing channel, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't taken a keen interest in the Brazilian mixed martial arts star Anderson Silva. His Matrix-like moves often have you on the edge of your seat wondering how much more of this he can get away with. His UFC 101 clash with Forrest Griffin ended in swift Matrix-style fashion. Silva, aggressive here in round one. Confident in his striking. Look at the hands low. Yeah, I think Ducks he really under. Does. Look at Silva. I mean, that's just oh, amazing. Oh, and again. again. He's out. He's and out. It is all over. Anderson Silva. If Emmanuel Augustus's dancing moves can't put a smile on your face, then I don't know what will. He's a recently retired journeyman who had a record of 38 wins and 34 losses. But don't let the numbers fool you. His October of 2000 clash with pretty boy Floyd Mayweather is regarded by many as one of, if not the hardest fight of the pound for pound star's career. The dancing came real natural to Emmanuel during fights. One minute he's brawling and the next doing a bit of samba. Legendary stuff by a legendary showman. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I do tell him, like, what, what am I, why, why did I do this? <laughs> now here's Augustus with the showboating and a left hooker cut that comes in. And this is what he just loves to do, the stylist. Well, let's talk about what this can do. This can do a couple of things. One, he can definitely distract his opponent, although his opponent, Ray Oliveira, a guy who's fought for the world title, the IBF junior welterweight world title, and had fought seven colonels.